Hey friends, it's Molly. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be painting a mural on my craft room wall. For those of you who follow me on Instagram, you know that I've been working on redoing my craft room and I have painted everything, which I hate painting walls. Oh my gosh, I hate painting walls. I love doing like the mural kind of stuff. I just don't like cutting in and being, I don't like being neat. It's not good for me. So I painted three of the walls in my craft room, which by the way, my craft room is eight feet by eight feet. Like it's a tiny little square box. And so I don't have a lot of space in here, but I really wanted to do something fun for this back wall because I'm going to be filming in here and creating future videos in here. So I want to have something fun for you guys to look at behind me instead of just this big black wall. For those of you who are interested in what this color is, this is actually Bear Shadow Mountain. It's a really great kind of deep charcoal -y gray color. And the wall color, I'll show you. The wall color is called In The Moment, and that is also by Bear. So when I first started this project, I was looking at wallpaper, and I found all this wallpaper that I liked parts of, but I never liked anything just as a whole. And I thought, you know what? Why don't I just paint it? I know how to paint, I'll just paint it. So I decided before I just jumped straight into the wall that I should probably sketch out some ideas. So this is what I came up with. Now I created this in Procreate, which I talk a lot about on here. I love Procreate, it's so much fun. But I created this design in Procreate, and now I'm gonna be able to use this as a guide to help me with the placement of where things are gonna go on this wall. And then I also created it in Procreate so that I could project it up on my wall to make my life easier. Downside of that is that my projector, which by the way is an amazing projector, and if you're in the market for one, I'll link it below, I can't find it. <laughs> it's somewhere, when I packed up my craft room, it's somewhere in a box in my den and I'm just not gonna go dig for it. So I'm gonna just go ahead and look at my drawing that I've done and then just draw. That's gonna be the first step, but so much work to do. And I'm glad that you're here to follow along. So let's get started making a mural. I'm going to be drawing my design on the wall with compressed charcoal, which I'll link that in the description below. Uh, but regular chalk is really chunky and it's just, it's not the best thing for murals. Um, another thing that works really well are watercolor pencils work really well. Um, regular pencils are kind of a pain just because if you're using some lighter colors, sometimes they still show up out of, it's just, this is the best. So I'm trying to film on my phone as well as my camera and Jack has my iPad, so here is my design. <laughs> and I'm going to try to see this on this tiny little watch screen while I draw, so wish me luck. The great thing about using the chalk, is that, or the compressed charcoal, is that I can just take a damp rag and so if there's a part that I've drawn that I don't want or that I need to fix, I can just easily get rid of that. And it's, it comes off very, very easily. I'm telling you, compressed white charcoal is the way to go. You can erase so easily. 
and there's not a lot of dust going everywhere. It cleans off easily. It's a nice fine line. This is the ticket. Just keep a damp cloth on hand the whole time, otherwise you'll be annoyed with how many times you have to go down the ladder and back up. All right, so I've got the wall all drawn out. The one thing, the very bottom seems a little empty. Here, I'll show you. See how there's not a lot right down here? That's because everything goes on top of that spiky little plant. And so I wanna make sure that I'm doing everything in the background first, then I will go in after that dries, draw in more flowers, paint it, and then let that dry, and then I'll go in and fill in all the little negative space between all the plants. So, it's time to start painting, my favorite part. So when I went to Home Depot, I got a whole bunch of samples of colors, and you can actually see, the girl was so sweet, she put all of my little uh, color swatches underneath the paints that they went with. And I'll list all the colors that I use in the description below. Um, if any of you are interested. So I've got, I actually have, let's see, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. I have 11 sample pots, but then I have, um, I still have my, what's left of my quart of the cupcake pink, and I have what's left of my wall color. So I'm gonna incorporate those into the design as well, which has already been done, already been incorporated. It's all on here. So, um, but I wanted to show you some of the things that I'm gonna be using to paint with. Got this little round brush uh, from Lowe's and it's, it, makes, it makes it really easy to make a perfect little circle. And, and then I went to Home Depot. Um, I was just all over the place for this project. This is a square. So this is actually used for like windows, ledges, all that kind of thing. But look at this brush tip. It's like a chisel. So I think it's gonna do a really nice job of making a nice straight line. So I'm gonna be using these, but then I also went to my local art store and got these. These are empty acrylic tubes that basically it's your way of turning these into paint pens. So see that little tip? So these you fill with whatever paint you have. And I got all different sizes. I got like a regular kind of marker paint pen. I got an even larger one. I got a nice chisel and they're all empty. So I get to fill these up. The thing is, is when you do something, sorry, that paper's loud. The thing is, is when you do something like that, you really have to plan out your colors well. You can't change these out. Like once this becomes a certain color, that's it. And these aren't cheap. I mean, I think I paid, I don't know, maybe $9.99 for these. Like it's not cheap, but if it makes my life easier, then that's good. You can also get them pre-filled. So these are Liquitex acrylic markers and so this one I got in titanium white I also got this light pink and I got it in a black here are the tools that I'm using for this I've got all of my different paint colors I've got a variety of different brush sizes I have my pre-filled acrylic markers I have my empty tubes to fill up and then I've also found this Mod Podge set of decoupage brushes, and I really liked them because they're, first of all, very short. Um, so I'll have a lot of control over them and a very fine brush because they're meant for decoupage. So I think that's gonna work really well to put the paint on smoothly. So we're gonna try those. So now what I need to do is I need to look at my design and figure out which size marker needs to have which color, and then which paints just need to be for brush, not for markers, because I don't have 11 markers. So that's gonna be what I do now.
This is a workout. For some reason, my pinky hurts. I'm, I think I'm putting all the strain in my pinky when I'm painting, but my pinky is very sore. It's gonna be very buff by the end of all this. Okay, so while I have this paint out and this paintbrush dirty, I'm gonna go through and look at my mural design and see what else is this color. I am also gonna have to apply another coat to this one. You can see. All right, so as you can see with this leaf, like it definitely needs to be filled in a lot better. But that is gonna have to dry first before I can add another coat. That's the one downside of using the wall paint is it tends to pick itself back up quite a bit. It's very sticky. So in order to help me remember what color's what, I am going to, I don't have to take my phone up there the whole time, but I'm gonna go through and find all the areas that I need to paint blue and just put a little dot on them so that I can then go back and know, oh well, that's good. Oh wait, that's gonna be blue. All right, so this is the Liquitex acrylic markers. And all you have to do with these, shake them really well, and then press down just like a regular paint pen, but it has a nice wide nib. So I'm gonna use that for everything on my wall that's gonna be this light pink. And this works really, really well. It also is nice to be able to to draw instead of paint. I feel like I have a little bit more control over it. Now it does come off kind of thin, so you're gonna need to go over this a couple times, but it does dry quickly, so it shouldn't take too long. Tell us say everybody say like and subscribe. Subscribe. Say give the video a big thumbs up. <laughs> Only downside of working with a wall paint as opposed to like an acrylic is it's a lot thinner. And so it does require you going in and doing additional layers. But that's okay. It's a whole lot cheaper to use wall paint than it is to go buy enough acrylic to cover your entire wall. So one other tip that I have for you is to take the 
wall color of the other walls that you're using um, if you do have a separate wall color. Make sure you incorporate that into your mural. So I'm using this uh, In the Moment from Bear. I'm using that on my mural and then I'm also using the same cupcake pink that I did in my, my closet. So that's also going to be in the mural. So it just kind of all ties together. Nice cohesive design. Plus it's paint that I already have, so it works out that way too. Now if you can get the quartz, which I know those little sample ones are so much cheaper, but if you can get the quart of the primer, um, it's the paint and primer in one. Oh, this covers so well. Um, so it does cost a little bit more, but maybe if you weren't going to do quite as many colors as I'm doing, I would highly recommend just getting a quart of this paint because I'm not going to have to go back and do multiple coats of this, which is kind of incredible considering all the other sample ones. I'm going to have to go back and do probably two or three coats on. So it'll be a big time saver if you can handle the extra cost. But time is money, people. Time is money. So we're on day 462 of painting the mural and we're making a little bit of progress. I have a helper here who is supposed to be helping this progress, but I do believe he is slowing it down just a tiny bit. Isn't that right, Jack? Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's get back to it. Oh, and I have a new light, which I know that's kind of crazy right now because it's, oh, it seems like I've got a spotlight above me. But, I'll show you guys how cool this is. So I had the light that was the directional light that um, it had three little lights going off of it and I thought it was gonna work and I was really excited about it and then I realized it was just not enough light. And the spotlight was really, really harsh. Like it had like a severe spotlight on three of the walls and that just wasn't gonna cut it. So I got a light that my husband told me to get, and I have to be honest, I was like, that's hideous. I do not want a shop light in my happy craft space. This is, this is where I go for me time. This is, not, this is not the look that I want. So I fought it, and then I found this one, which is the coolest light ever. It gives so much light, and my favorite part about it, and the only reason that I allowed a square flat panel to be up on my ceiling, is because this is called a good earth light. Sorry, I'm really close to y'all right now. There you go. This is called a good earth light, and it has an app. So watch. Oh, I just turned the lights off. Now I do have a ring light right here, but yeah. I can control it by my phone. The other super cool thing about this is that I can actually adjust, I can actually adjust the lighting on the app. So I can adjust the brightness. So if I want it to be darker or if I want it to be brighter, I can adjust the temperature so that if I want it to be cooler, super creepy, but you can adjust the temperature of the light and find what works for you. So it's kind of amazing. Now, the other thing that I love about it is you can create a scene. And so the scene is if you find a custom setting that you like, you can save it as that certain setting. So here is for my YouTube channel, much better lighting, my leisure. These are ones they had set up focus which I don't know how anybody's supposed to focus in this creepy light, but this is focus. This is the reading setting. And twilight, which is a very, actually it's very nice. And this might be the time to show you what the panel looks like. 
That's the panel. The panel that I swore I would never get. But I love it. So I'm going to put a link to this in the description below because the slide is really, really cool. Let me go back to... Oh, it seems so bright now. There we go. I'm going to put a link to this in the description below because this is a really, really cool light. And if you have a workshop or you have a craft room, it's a great, great light. I mean, I can see everything. Also, the downside is I can see everything. I can't tell you how many times I've had to touch up paint that before I didn't quite notice. But now that I have this really great light, I'm like, oh, okay, I need to touch that up. All right, I've got to get back to painting because... I have one week before the One Room Challenge is done and I've got to finish this wall and then get the rest of this room set up and I've got to organize. So for this video, I'm just showing you the mural. Uh, I'm going to have another video all about the organization of my craft room and then an overall just kind of quick snippet video of the transformation of the craft room. So three videos. I don't know the order in which I'm putting them out. So if you're watching this one and you've already seen the other two, then I guess this one was last, but more than likely this will be first. And then I will do the general one and then the specific detail. The details and the organization one, that's the one I'm most excited about because I have found some really, really great organization solutions. So be sure to check those out. Okay, back to work. So you definitely have to step back a lot when you're doing a mural because it's like everything looks good up close and you step back and you're like, oh, bass of hole. So get ready to go back and forth a whole lot. Now, once you've finished a section, let's see if you can see, you see all my little lines. All you have to do is get a damp cloth and then you just wipe it straight off. And it comes off easily. Now it's all clean. That's why I love doing the chalk instead of pencil because if I had done pencil and then been any pencil lines, then I would have had to go back through and erase and that would not have been fun. So that's how you clean it up. Now a quick tip, if you are having problems with broken lines, like when you're painting, if it's looking, um, it's not looking smooth and it's getting a little bumpy, try, try adding the Liquitex acrylic medium. Just add a little bit to it. 
and just add a little bit first and kind of stir it around and then see how it is. Test a spot and then see if you need to add more because you definitely, it's harder to go back. So it's kind of like baking and adding water to ingredients. It's always better to just add a little bit at a time. But that'll help with the flow of your paint and it'll help it go on a little bit more smoothly. Because that could be really frustrating when you're trying to paint and all your lines are looking jagged and they're not nice and smooth and crisp. So try that. Well, I'm shooting in a dark room right now because there, when Corey went to put in the new outlet in my craft room closet and then our game room closet, he came across a major no-no up <laughs> in the ceiling uh, from the previous owners. And so he has had to redo all this work. And I feel horrible because it all started with wanting some innocent outlets and now it has become a kind of a nightmare. But <laughs> that being said, I have one outlet that works in my craft room right now, which is attached to this <laughs> ring light. And so I've been using a flashlight and a ring light to paint the rest of this wall, which is almost done. I'm putting in the last little details. It's kind of hard to see. Let's see if I can zoom in. Um, I'm putting all the little marks in between the designs. So I was one of those kids that I was obsessed with little details. So like the Where's Waldo books, I loved it. I would go through and find all the little tiny things. I just, I love, visually I love having to search a picture. And that's kind of the way that I like designs as well. Like I like designs that are not just, you look at it once and you accept it as a design. Like I want something that visually you look at and then you think, oh, I've never seen that before. Like I like, I don't know, it's, it's almost like an art scavenger hunt. And so that's kind of the way that I've approached this wall. I have put in my major designs in here uh, and then have filled in between with all different types of little patterns. And so that each time that I look at the wall or someone else looks at the wall, I'm hoping that they'll be like, oh, I never even saw that flower before. So that's what I'm going for with this wall. I have one more section to do and then I am done. And then the lights should be back on by then and I can show you guys the finished product. So, <laughs> he just said, I'm working on it. Thank you, sweetie. All right, I'll show you guys the final product very soon. Well, my mural is finally finished. Oh, this was a labor of love, but I'm so thrilled with how it turned out. I would say in all, this mural took me approximately a week to paint like a 40 hour week <laughs> to paint, but it was worth it. I love it, I love it, I love it. And it was actually a lot of fun to paint. Well guys, I hope you had fun, I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to check back because I'm gonna show you the full craft room makeover because there's so much that's been done in here other than this wall. And I'm also gonna be doing that video all about organization and how I've organized this tiny, tiny space. So thank you guys again for joining me. Don't forget to go out and have a little me time. You deserve it. I'll see y'all next time. Bye.